Assalamualaikum and hi everyone um, Today we will look into the lecture number 8 Multiple attenuation We already seen in the previous lecture On the deconvolution part Okay, Where we learn a little bit of recap We already learn about the winner filter For the predictive deconvolution As well as for the spiking deconvolution We know about the inverse filter And least square inverse filter Those are the techniques are useful in eliminating the noise As well as making the uh, wave flat sharper However, if you can remember in the lecture 7D, when we when we go through the Wiener filter for predictive deconvolution, we have seen some of the multiple attenuation process that can be handled by the predictive deconvolution. Therefore, in this lecture, we will look into more detail about the multiple attenuation process. At the end of this lecture, basically, you should be able to identify different types of the multiple, explain the characteristic, as well as the techniques to attenuate them. You should be able to perform the tau p transform uh, in order to remove the multiple as well as assess the different domain that can be used for multiple attenuation. And this particular lecture is relevant to the following course and the outcome. You can ask the basic data processing sequence as well as process a real seismic reflection data and map to the following program outcomes of the PO number one, apply the principles of science and engineering in petroleum geoscience application as well as apply the fundamentals of geosciences to solve geosciences related problem. The where is the multiple attenuation come in? Okay, you can see in the green box over there, it came after the after the data sorting. Yeah. In the noise attenuation, in the deconvolution, we conduct most of the processes in the short and receiver domain. However, in the multiple attenuation, if you were to effectively attenuate the multiple, you need to sort the data to rearrange back the data that you have into a CDP and offset domain. Okay. Um, why we need to do data sorting first? Is it not uh, not possible to do in the short domain? No, it's possible to do multiple attenuation in short domain. However, there are some uh, multiples that you will not be able to remove effectively in the short domain. Therefore, to have an, an effective multiple attenuation process, you need to convert or you need to sort your data in terms of the CDPN offset domain. Multiples come in come in many type of forms. Okay, in this example, uh, shown in the wax box over here, is a in terms of the interbed. It can come also in terms of the pack light. It can come in terms of the water bottle multiples. It can come in terms of the intrabed as well, not intrabed. Okay, so multiple can take various type of forms. So it's actually very difficult to remove a certain type of the multiples. As shown over here, we have two type of the multiples: short path and long path. Okay, in the short path, it's difficult to recognize and even difficult to remove. Okay, the long path. It's much easier to identify but and as well as also much easier to remove the multiple and you can see clearly in terms of the method to uh, attend the multiple as well in short path you need a uh, path shortening as packing the conversation is just a, a basic method to remove the multiple but these two methods actually can remove um, the multiples occur in the session data 100% Okay. Sometimes you need more than these two methods. Okay, for example, short path you can see from here the first one mentioned is ghost. Okay, this is the most famous one and the most difficult to remove. Okay. In terms of the long path, you have the intrabed and interbed. You have the near surface or water bottle multiples, which is quite easy to remove. Okay, it's based on the prediction of the seismic waveform that you get. Okay. You can use the predictive deconvolution as mentioned in lecture number 70. Yeah. Can use the NMO plus stacking. However, you need to be cautioned. The solution that we see in the previous lecture is is a simplistic situation. In reality, you have a far more difficult uh, and complex to to remove the multiple. So, in order to remove the multiple, first you need to understand the characteristic of the multiple. Okay, the multiple has been shown by this image. Okay, you can see. Is your primary and your multiple where your primary and multiple signal recorded at the same receiver uh, from the same source? 
However, the thing is the multiple it bounce back at the C level while the primary only reflected once at the reflector. Okay. Consequently, if you can see the short gaiters that we acquire, okay, we can clearly see that the multiple has the slower velocity. Okay. In, in in other words, you have a you can see a different considerably a different normal move out of the multiple compared to the primary. Okay. This basically that's come in when that's why we need to convert the data in the CDP to CDP and offset domain. Okay, you can see it's in terms of the offset. So we can see the further away, the far far offset that we can go, the multiple become more slow. You need a need, and therefore we need a normal move up correction, and you can consider a velocity discrimination to remove the multiple. On the other hand, it also has the repetitive nature. Okay, the multiple has a repetitive nature. Mentioned over here, you have primary, and then you have the first multiple and second multiple, which has a considerably uh, more or less same duration from the primary. Okay, so it's repetitive in nature. And can be removed using the statistic, statistical method, okay? Because it has statistical characteristic. <coughs> so we look in the first type of the multiple. The first one is motor motor multiple. You can see from the blue color, which is your primary, and the green color is the first multiple, and red color is the second multiple. We can also use this multiple to calculate the travel time path from the source to the receiver. Okay, as shown in this example, the primary signal, TP, which is set from the source, goes straight towards the receiver, can be represented by this form, by this equation, which S is the, basically the offset, Z is the depth, and V is the velocity. We want to consider the multiple. Okay, in this, in, in this example, the first type of the multiple, since you now you have been the the the, the wave travel to the reflector go back to the surface bounce back means that you need to have a, a double the time of the primary so you have a multiple time tm is equal to four times with the x over four square plus z square over v okay. The primary path, one of the example in A shown over here. The B show the first pet like multiple. Okay, you can see like this. Or the other way around in at the receiver part. Or you can also have the second pet like it bounce twice and go down to the another reflector. Which is high, highly complicated to resolve this particular multiple. You can also do this kind of the intra back multiple. Okay, the primary in A, the the uh, figure in B shows the in first intra back multiple, and C shows the second intra back multiple. We can actually eliminate the multiple using several techniques. The most famous one using the previously we used the stack. Okay, just use the stack to eliminate the multiples. However, with the current uh, subsurface problems and, and complexity. The stack and weighted stack is no longer uh, a suitable method to use. So, even predictive deconvolution cannot be used alone. Some we sometimes, most of the time, we use the predictive deconvolution in combination with the public tau p transform. Okay, this one need to be co combined in order to remove the multiple. Other than these two, as well, we also have a uh, uh, SRME. Okay. To solve the multiple, and then sometimes we also have the surf, uh, shallow water shallow water the multiple techniques SWD in combination to the SRME SWD and the linear uh, with the radon transform combining combining these four together in order to remove the multiple. So basically, to solve the multiples cannot be cannot be done using a single technique and can it be, cannot be done overnight. It has to be a combination of several methods in order to tackle a several types of the multiples. So we will in the tau p domain. Why is this actually a tau p domain? Uh, we have seen the short and receiver domain. 
we have seen the CDP and offset domain. Now the topic domain is basically a different domain where we can convert our data in order to remove the multiple. Okay. Multiple predictability in the topic domain have been developed to take the advantage of the exact temporal predictability of the multiple events in the topic domain and to improve the signal to the ratio due to the transform acting as a deep filter. So your data at the addition of CMP gathers, for something we need to convert in terms of the tau p domain where tau is intercept time. Intercept time means that the time intercept at the zero at, at, at the zero offset. Okay. As well as the p which is the slowness, the inverse of the velocity, one over v. Okay. In the in the in the short gathers domain, in the in the short gathers domain, you have a data or uh, also in CDP, do, CDP domain, you have a data where the slope is given by is, is given is giving you the velocity, okay, the slope of the uh, event of the of the uh, particular reflection. Yeah. While if you project the back this particular slope, if you project the back to the zero offset, you get the intercept time. So the intercept time tau will be given a value while the slope is given you a slowness which is inverse of the velocity and these two information tau and p you can map correspondingly in the tau p domain okay in other words if you have a steeper slope okay such as in the blue color over here if a steeper slope means that you have a slower velocity or higher slowness while if you have a less steep slope you have a faster velocity and decrease in terms of the slowness okay, when we look if we map each particular reflector reflection in the tx domain in the space domain okay we take for example in this example you have the first uh, first reflection flat one okay we giving you a velocity very fast velocity okay remember if you have a less steep slope you have a faster velocity if you have a steeper slope you have a slower velocity so the first one you have a um, uh, faster velocity in other words you have a very low slowness value okay and the corresponding tau value the intercept time p1 is another uh, steep uh, slope which has a higher slowness value compared to the p naught p2 and the p3 p3 which is the slowest uh, events or slowest reflections which uh, which in other words giving you uh, the highest slowness value if we map each particular information of tau and p then you can map in terms of the tau p domain which is giving you a straight line due to the same tau value okay but you have a different slowness value so p naught which is the fastest is at the uh, at the closer to the uh, 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 tau boundary so you have a slower velocity it, it goes away from the this tau uh, axis now let's say we consider the arrival times of the direct arrival and a simple reflection in time and time okay you can see from here this is your source and this is your receiver from x1 to xn so you have if you have a direct arrival and you have a reflection okay if at this at the short at, at, at the near offset near offset value the direct arrival will arrive earlier compared to the reflection however if you have a go to the uh, far offset the direct arrival and the uh, reflection is closely having a uh, uh, having a close uh, arrival time okay to each other okay now let's say if you want to map in these two in terms of the tau p domain okay let's say we have a 
a straight line which is the direct level should be no problem but let's say if you have a hyperbola okay generally we have a hyperbola if we have if you look back in our uh, previous uh, slides we have the hyperbola due to the reflection then this hyperbola basically in order to map into the tau p domain you need to have a tangential line at each particular point of the hyperbola in this example you have one two and three at this particular point one this particular point two and this particular point three so you have three tangential points that give you a different tau okay tau tau one tau two and tau three okay and correspondingly different p value p1 and this one is p3 p2 and p1 okay oh actually that the way around according to this one this one is supposed to be p3 this one is p2 this one is p1 okay all right so this corresponding tau 1 tau 2 and tau 3 so you map this particular tau and p value and if you can map in term of the tau p domain you will get an an ellipse shape of the output okay so what is this useful in eliminating the multiple okay we will look into the first one let's say we have a primary primary events in the red color and the first order multiple in term in blue color and second order multiple in the green color okay if we map this particular events into the tau p domain okay the primary is given the first line okay while the multiple m1 and the m2 and if we map correspondingly in term in in the tau p domain you can see a similar three uh, ellipse line okay in the in the x to x domain the the event a dash b dash and c dash are not periodic okay however if you map into the tau p domain a b and c are now periodic so you can easily eliminate the b and c which is your multiple if you look into the real data set if you have a uh, input short domain like this you do a tau p domain the forward tau p you map in term of the tau as well as the p and from here generally what we do is we have a tau we have a deconvolution the predictive deconvolution in order to remove the the what we call the echo as you as, as, if, as if you can remember last last in previous lecture we learned about the how to remove the echo if we have the uh, the the sequence of, of the waveform prediction okay we can easily remove the echo therefore by removing through the deconvolution predictive deconvolution we can easily map back in the tx domain and we already lost out the multiple we already removed the multiple this particular multiple okay you can see from the output now the amplitude will be reduced although not 100% but we already eliminate most of the multiples so the the concept is you forward the you you forward your your waveform from the tx domain to the tau p domain you do the deconvolution the pdt deconvolution and then you reverse back the tau p domain next Besides the tau p domain, we can also have a tau p parabolic transform, which is a high resolution version of the radon transform. Okay, radon means that the tau p. Able to preserve the primary amplitudes better than conventional transform and also give a more complete multiple removal. Resist the spatializing of multiple that occurs with some accusation geometries and reduce the need for the trace interpolation before the multiple removal. This is an example of the tau p public transform instead of having a tangential of one particular at this particular hyperbolic we have a range of parabola used during the transform okay not only a single line but a range of the parabolas okay therefore by this doing this way basically you eliminate the multiple curve before you do the transform itself so in the in your tau p domain 
you no longer have this particular multiple so you can easily after you do the do forward transform you can straight forward do the inverse transform means that you already eliminate the multiple which is not inside your forward transform in the first place okay this is an, an example if you have the input okay shown in the first 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 figure if you have if you are using a standard taupi domain uh, taupi domain method to eliminate the multiples and if you compare if you compare using the parabolic taupi domain then you can see we you can we can have a, uh, a highly coherent events that not visible in the general uh, taupi domain while both are having uh, very much removing the multiples you can see this particular multiple already been removed by either using the uh, gener uh, using the taupi domain or the parabolic taupi domain okay in high uh, in public taupi domain you can see this this part where having a similar velocity with the primary also been removed quite quite very clear very good okay this is an example of the multiple attenuation process before and after. Okay, to the left hand side and uh, is before the multiple attenuation, and the right hand side is the after after the multiple attenuation. You can see this part already been removed. Okay, very good, very clear. Okay, and this is actually the 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 multiples of this base of the uh, salt body. Okay. And finally, before we end our lecture today, I would like you to take a look between this image, which is uh, before the multiple attenuation, and this one. Okay, there's some differences between these two images. At the end, actually. Uh, we have seen the multiple signal was recorded due to the energy trap in the shallow water or rock layers. It can be in terms of the interbed, it can be in terms of the intrabed, it can be in terms of the back leg. Okay. The multiple reflection events uh, obscure or mask the primary events from the deeper reflectors. Multiples have the more normal move out than the primary reflection because of larger portion of their path is within a shallow or lower velocity walk. On stack data, Multiple reflections have dips that are multiples of the primary reflection dip. And therefore, the periodicity changes with offset and time, therefore limiting the ability of deconvolution to remove them.